So what we have here today is yet another Marshall. Uh, and what, which one is this are we looking at? This? We're looking at a 1979 JMP 2203. So 100 watts, we're pretty sure the earliest Marshall with a master volume. So we have... Belongs to Kenny. We have preamp volume, master volume, treble, middle, bass, and presence. Um, so first thing I always do is basically see, uh, you know, check the output power on, on an amp. So <coughs> turn it up to the point of clipping. And the meter reads 107 watts. So uh, it's uh, looking pretty healthy. I uh, do notice, however, when we push it into clipping, you kind of hear that uh, undertone of this that's because of the uh, AC ripple on the uh, conventional power supply uh, which produces a kind of an atonal undertone to the uh, audio which uh, I will have to say we do not go to any particular trouble to reproduce that effect in our products because uh, I don't think it's very musical uh, but it is a uh, it is kind of part of the sound of uh, of a lot of classic amps. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is, with the master all the way up, we're getting power amp just uh, overdrive. What's interesting is, unlike a lot of Marshalls, we're not getting uh, any real uh, bias shift. Got some interesting second harmonic character, but uh, uh, not that sort of fizz and sizzle that you see on a lot of old amps. Right. Another interesting thing about this amp it's got serious preamp overdrive. Mm. I'm feeding at 20 millivolts right now, which is a relatively low signal, but it's enough to overdrive the preamp, which has its own kind of clipping. The, uh, I'm going to turn the input volume up just a little here. So now we're getting uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pretty close to clipping. Now, the interesting thing about this, that clipping comes before the tone controls, so the tone controls affect the sound of the clipping as well as the sound of the overall, just the tone of the amp. Hmm. So, uh, one of the more active presence controls I've ever, I've ever seen. Uh, but uh, typically this is played sort of in the middle of its range. Um, <coughs> right, so now we're uh, back on the uh, padded dummy load, so uh, uh, we can hear ourselves think. I'm going to turn the gain up until we get clipping. And you'll notice we get nice smooth clipping uh, with no power supply ripple. And uh, I dial in a little bit of this extra sizzle there. Uh, but for instance, if you use the cream setting, Uh, can get rid of that. Uh, but that, uh, you can actually sort of see the, uh, you can see the uh, waveform it goes through a little bit of our recovery dance, which is all part of the mojo. It, uh, helps separate your notes when you're playing fast. Uh, can't really tell on uh, just a sine wave, but uh, it gives you the general idea. Now again, if we do um, the same waveform, and then I switch to a, a live speaker, again, we have Lots more peaking and uh, uh, 
compared to the dummy load. So all part of what goes on under the hood to uh, just try to make a good sounding amplifier. Uh, so one thing before we go into a more uh, musical tone evaluation, I thought it would be uh, useful to illustrate a, uh, a couple of things. Um, uh, so now we're going to make a uh, power versus distortion sweep and we will see the results over here on the audio precision. So I have a a steady state test tone going and when I hit the button it will start at a very soft level and then ramp up to a larger level and we'll see a trace here which represents the distortion at each of these power levels. And there as we hit clipping the distortion shoots way up as usual. So uh, what this is telling us is that there's about 3% distortion below the point of clipping, uh, which is quite typical for most old tube amps. And, uh, and then it, uh, it enters distortion with a fairly soft knee, so it's got a kind of a, a manageable feel to it. Now if we turn the master way down and give it a little more preamp gain, we're going to see this curve, at a, uh, it's going to all be shifted down to a lower level. So here it comes now, and it's going to reach clipping now, a very soft kind of clipping, right around maybe a, a, a half a watt or something. So that kind of shows you the effect of the master control. It shifts the whole power right. curve of the amp down to a lower level. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we're about to run another THD versus uh, power curve. Starts out soft and uh, the distortion is very, very minimal at low levels. Um, but as it climbs up into the 1 to 2 watt region, the distortion climbs in a gentle way and then we hit uh, actual output clipping way up here around 100 watts. So this region here is designed to be, have a very similar 2 or 3 percent distortion curve as the classic tube amp had. If we uh, do the same thing on the brown setting, you'll see a slightly different curve here uh, showing that uh, we're duplicating the effect of a different output stage. So the uh, brown setting's cleaner in this sub distortion range, you know, uh, within like 10 dB of a of, um, output. Before we leave the subject, a uh, uh, quick illustration of some of the uh, uh, um, dummy load versus live speaker behavior on our Mach 2 Micro Pro, which is in this respect pretty much the same as all our amps. <coughs> so here we have you know, a rather average frequency curve. I kind of set it up to be similar to the Marshall. Uh, now watch what happens when we switch from the dummy load to the live speaker. So you uh, actually this is kind of interesting. We see, we see the expected treble rise with some little bumps and wriggles that actually illustrate that the speakers actual dynamics are reflecting and interacting with the amplifier. Uh, we have kind of uh, a double peak here, which uh, I think that dip there is where the cabinet tuning is, which registers as more audio output because the cabinet's adding to the output of the speaker, but it's actually holding the speaker back a little so the impedance goes down there, but it brings out more frequencies here and here, which again give you that kind of bigger sound even though it may measure the same on the bench. So one thing we hear right off, yeah, there's that kind of 
sizzle there. Tub, well, there's a sizzle, but there's a tubby quality from the, uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but, but the lowest bass notes are being filtered out, so you get that middle bass range. treble, so yeah. we'll turn that down. A little more bass. The main thing, as I, I like to say, is you've got a feeling of control. The, the way you play and the way you set your volume and whatnot, you can ease it in and out of distortion. So it's like an automobile where you can kind of feel the tires getting near the edge, but it's still, you can go into a controlled skid and you haven't completely lost control or spun out. You're just working the machine uh, to, get, you know, to get the sound you want. spank on those high licks but yeah. then you know the Marshall has its charms as well sure. so like I say you're kind of in the zone of well I like that red wine because it's fruitier and that one because it's With this bolder you know yeah. for amp demos and if you put a drummer in the corner every time you were playing and went to see if you could actually hear the difference. So. <laughs> single-ended, you get a little more grumble on the lo lower registers of that chord. Yeah. Almost like it wants to clear its throat a little bit. Right. Uh, and then uh, on that, we have a slightly more elaborate, it's more like a power amp overdrive. It's built into this. Uh, play that same thing. Or it has a little more definition, yeah. but it's still overdriving. Right. So you got the juice 
but a little more clarity. You hear the note separation yes, a little exactly. more. Yes, exactly. Now you don't get that with single-ended distortion. Uh, go ahead. Right, so that's our crane setting, which is like a single, like a tube screamer. It's a just a simple soft clip with no funny business, just a straight ahead clipping. So it captures the middle part of the complex waveform and uh, you know a classic tube power amp tends to capture the outer parts as well so mm -hmm. um, uh, you get kind of a choice between the two. So here's the, the single-ended sound and then the uh, 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 push-pull sound. That's more fun. Damn! But you know, for kind of your ton of bricks metal sound, the single-ended sound, you just you know, it was when you got to just like push it over the clip, so right. to speak. Uh, of course, obviously has its uses. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Some more of a complex chord, not complex, but right. you hear the, yeah, you still hear that note. Within, exactly, it's really cool. Um, that's I have a C6 tuning on my lap here, <laughs> my one of my standard tests for whether I like the distortion or not is if I play a big sixth chord, does it just disintegrate into noise, or can I actually <laughs> still hear, hear those, those individual sure. notes? Well, Kewl. Kewl it is. Fuck, sounds great. <laughs> now, we don't have, I mean, we're using the loud boost, but you get the same place with just the gain. Right. Thank you for very much for this demo. Oh, my pleasure. Fine to hear <coughs> such fine hot licks. <laughs> wow, <clears throat> really impressed. I've never dove super deep into this particular model. So. Yeah, well, yeah, this has a, it's, I mean, you can get a good sound almost right off, but there's a lot of little bells and whistles yeah. to play with. Uh, uh, so. so the combo version does the same thing of this? Yeah. yeah this really? Is just the top part of a combo. Which uh, weighs seven uh, pounds. Really? It weighs that much? I didn't think so. <laughs> wow. And it's got a hundred watts, so it'll, it would, you know, over, uh, sure. keep up with the Marshall sure. uh, if you ever had to get it. 